Okay. Well, it's a genetic condition that actually affects the skin. If you think back to the dinosaur age, there was one called an ichthyosaurus. This is where the name ichthyosis comes from because it is scale like a, a fish. Now, within ichthyosis, there are 27 different types. And within those types, you have different levels of severity. So you've got Children that are very mild, like my granddaughter, probably the mildest person we know with ichthyosis, to a condition of ichthyosis called Harlequin, and that is the severest. Now, when the youngest one was born, and I believe this is her, this is what she looks like. Yeah, it's, it's dreadful, isn't it? Uh, but she needs a normal life, a life as normal as she possibly can. She has to be creamed with um, very thick emollients, rather like Vaseline, but even thicker than Vaseline. And she has to be, her sister as well, has to be covered in that because otherwise their skin just cracks, bleeds, and they will be very, very sore and uncomfortable. So their daily regime begins at 4 o'clock in the morning with the bath, and they have almost like a scrubbing brush to scrub all the skin that's grown that would take you two weeks to grow it's taken her overnight to grow and she has to scrub that off then she has to get out of the bath be patted dry then this cream put on and that regime happens getting in the bath out of it getting scrubbed two or three times a day is it that sort of permanent disease? it is permanent there is no cure the only thing you can do is keep your skin comfortable there's no medication, it's just um, the pharmaceutical companies keep so going up with it. It's an inherited condition. Now, we have a granddaughter with it. My husband might carry the gene, the recessive gene. I might, we don't know. One of us carries it, which we passed on to our daughter. Our daughter has then met a chap, married him, and they've had a baby. Now, it was an absolute shock to us when this baby was born because she was bright red, hence the colour for our logo. And I was told by the midwife that she had lots of oxygen and that was all. Well, it wasn't because it didn't look all to me. So she then began to peel around her mouth. By about day four, all of her skin was falling off. And she had to have cream put on her. They said, oh, don't worry, she was an early baby. No, she wasn't. She wasn't lazy either. So they then decided that a dermatologist should look at her. But six months before she was given a, a diagnosis of ichthyosis. But in the meantime, she shed her skin like a snake. But she has turned out to have it very, very mildly. So if she stood here now, you would not know, other than she has red cheeks on a good day. On a bad day, when she's had a cold, her body's too busy sorting out the virus of the cold, so her skin goes to cold. But within weeks, she's back to normal again. With these children, it's slightly different. They never look, and they don't have a day where they do look good. But that is the severest, and she is the, the mildest. But it's very in forms. But with this condition, you have it for life. And as it's only one in 300,000 births, it is extremely rare. Do they have to be in the sun too much? Yeah, they don't have to avoid the sun, but you wouldn't want to go out in it for too long. Dermatologists have come up with a, a skin, uh, a sun cream for their skin, which gives them some sort of protection. But I think with children like these, highly fit children, they wouldn't want to be out in the sun, because I think it would be... Their skin would be quite sensitive, so they wouldn't want to go out. I think that's quite sad. Is it the yes. same with the cold as well? Yeah. If, yes. Yes. So you, the cold winds would would affect, yeah, dry your skin out exceedingly. So it's sort of kind of like um, those uh, disease like cystic fibrosis. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's a recessive gene that you don't know you've got until the two get together. You know, it, but I know families who had two children and then had a third with ichthyosis. My daughter had a second baby who hasn't with ichthyosis. It's very unpredictable. Yeah, very unpredictable. Well, uh, yeah, twenty-five percent chance. Yeah, one in four. did um, genetics. Oh, did you? Oh, right. Yeah, so that yeah. Yes, yeah, I would imagine it would be. Yes, 
Yes, well the recessive gene is responsible. I mean, we don't know where it's come from, we don't know which one of us has got it, but we know one of us has. Yeah. And there are, no, there are no tests for it yet, because they've got to identify the gene before they can test. What is it? But um, finding out which one of us has got it would be no benefit to, Good. to what's happening now. But, you know, in future generations, it won't be in our lifetime. Uh, future generations, it will be useful, you know, helpful to them. But, in a nutshell, that is ecosystem. There's a lot more to it.